All right. So these are all the components I'm going to work with to, to finalize my creature. But like these orchids, those are just going to help with some details. And there's going to be a lot of kind of internal use of them. So I'm not worried about them too much yet. What I am noticing is kind of lighting differences and I need to clean up elements. So the easiest one to notice, first of all, are these feet. And you see how the lighting is dark to light there and then light to dark there. And out here, it's kind of light on the outside, dark towards the inside. So I need to swap those feet. So before we do any kind of finishing work, this is the kind of thing we want to notice. And then just little transforms. The foot that's closer to us is going to be bigger than the foot that's furthest from us. And then I can try warping a little bit again. Turn that foot a little bit. And now what we're going to do is erase away and blend them. But what I'm most worried about are the internal edges. So. We're going to use that soft hard edge eraser and start at 100% opacity and an appropriate size. Just to get rid of that hardest edge. On both. And then I can start worrying about the external edges. But now the lighting works best on both of those. Now just noticing the direction of the lighting, that really helps make those feet more believable. But then to really cut them out, I have to get on the outside edges as well. But these internal edges, those make a big difference, transitioning one texture to the next. So what we want to get it to is that we know with some confidence what the external edges will be. And you want to put all of your layers on. So for instance, like these orchids, that means I don't need to cut away all this stuff from that external edge because the orchids will create the external edge for me. But I do need to cut away all this stuff. So this is how I kind of like to do it. I'm going to start from what's closest to the viewer, the snout, and move backwards, and then clean up the edges. So the first thing I see is right here. You know, this layer needs to be erased. So I go back to, oops, I go back to my move tool and auto select layer, and I can just click on that and then use my eraser at 100% opacity. and delete that away. But then there might be other little remnants. This is why I've turned the sketch off. And sometimes you don't want to delete it. So that's part of the, the tusk. Sometimes you just want to dodge and burn it. In this case, I want to burn it. Get that darker. And sometimes you even need to dodge or you need to burn highlights. Help things sync together. This is all in shadow underneath. There's the internal edge there that I can use a soft edged eraser at a much smaller size and help transition those edges. You know, playing with levels and color helps as well. A shortcut is if you hold down command, you'll get back to the move tool. And if you have auto select turned on, you can use that to move around your different selections and erase away from your edges. Okay, then moving up the head, I see all of these, these edges. So I'm going to hit command. Get that one, 
and then just cut it out by hand. computer can keep up with me. Use the magic wand now that I've kind of cut out a chunk of it. Whoops, I need to turn contiguous back on. Huh? Whoops, it's connecting in a way I didn't think it would. Let's see. Must not have fully disconnected it. Huh. Well, I can jump <coughs> to a harder, larger brush at that point. Just erase it away. So in, internal edges you take care of first, then external edges. And we're going to learn some great tricks about how we can kind of carry textures and move them from place to place using clone snap. But I need to erase some of these background layers as well. Then I might decide, okay, this layer is looking good, but I need to burn it or color correct it or do something. I'm going to change to midtones. Just transition it a little bit better. If your computer goes slow, it's a good time to save it. You can always hit Command O to get back to seeing everything. <coughs> or you can use the navigator. My computer is unresponsive at the moment, it's still burning. There we go. <laughs> so Command O will just make it fit in the screen. And so I've cleaned up, you know, from the snout back. And so I just want to continue that. Now I'll work on this side of the snout on the other side of the tusk. So I hold down Option, or I'm sorry, Command to get to the Auto Select tool, and I can just start erasing the big clunky things I know I don't need around that tusk. And then next, until I get to the gray. and work backwards from there. You can use magic wand where you think it's useful, but often these are going to be really close kinds of pixels. 
so you often just have to cut it out with your eraser. And if it's soft textures like feathers or really thin hairs, sometimes it's good to use a soft edge lower opacity eraser right at the right at the edge so you get some slight transparency like light coming through the feathers of a bird now I always recommend you kind of zoom in to a hundred percent never more than two hundred percent because you'll see what's actually going to get printed And these, these textures that are like hard edged, like the scales on this tortoise foot, are a little less forgiving than softer edged textures. So I'm having to take my time kind of cutting these out. But once I do, it's very easy to erase all the layers behind them. Okay, now let's try magic wands. Yes. Okay. So then those cutouts, that allows us to then go to the layers behind and just use a big, broad, 100% eraser. Oops. Just get rid of it. That's a good thing. All right, so that will do it for today. And this is where we want to be beginning of next class, and we'll refine it further.